Nestled near Chitwan National Park in Kawasoti lies the Green Chwadi Nature Retreat, a peaceful getaway with a purpose. Here, guests enjoy hospitality and explore local culture while also contributing to social initiatives like women empowerment and child education. Hello and welcome to nepaltraveler.com. We are back once again with our weekly episode of Nepal Travel Trade Talk. And today we are joined by a very interesting, a young social entrepreneur in tourism, whose story, who's doing things very differently and perhaps it can inspire a whole generation of younger tourism entrepreneurs or younger people entering into the tourism industry. I'd like to welcome our guest for today, Mr. Raghav Pratab, who's a social entrepreneur. Welcome Thank to the you. show, sir. Thank you so much. So to start with, we talked a little earlier about your journey as a social entrepreneur. So how did you enter into tourism and your that background with development? If you could tell us about that. Thank you, Terrence, for this opportunity. Uh, let me begin quickly with my background. In the beginning, I was like, more a business professional, a business student, a business graduate. And uh, like that was more hype time with MB and things. So I was like that in the beginning. And there was a time when I realized that there are so much or so many corporate managers, or managers already in the globe. And what we need is social managers who actually would, you know, calculate the profit and loss of the community, of the society, not of a company. So that was like a paradigm shift in, in my career. And then my education was like shifted to conflict and peace. So uh, from business, it was more to conflict and peace. And that gave me entrance to, let's say, development sector. And I was like working with um, the UN system, worked for UNESCO, for KI International, some renowned other INGOs. And then there was a point when I thought that uh, Nepal now needs, you know, job creators than job seekers. And that was like a deeper realization within me that, that brought an idea that why not focus on entrepreneurship? But then my head or my heart was always more with, you know, uh, community, social empowerment, you know not just writing good reports, but making some impacts mm -hmm. on the field. So um, I think for Nepal, the best platform to, you know, tap such opportunities was uh, or is none other than tourism. So then I connected my social mindset with social entrepreneurship. And then I connected that to tourism. And then we started our whole social initiative. So tell us about your green Chawadi, the, the project that you are having. Mm -hmm. A little bit about that. All right. First of all, I would say it's not a project because project always has timeline and then deadline and then you finish and then you start new. But then I think whenever we have some sustainable perspective or sustainable mindset, it's not better calling it project, right? So it's, it's better an initiative, a sustainable initiative. So Green Chwadi Nature Retreat, um, I will have to go back to around five years. We started it uh, in 2019, in the month of August. And uh, the interesting thing is that it was uh, uh, started in uh, Naval Parasi Kawasoti, let's say Chitwan National Park zone, that, that belt. And we have the community called Tharu and Bote. So they are like, authentic indigenous groups in Nepal. And um, how we started was like, I, as I said, you 
as I told you that we had inter, we I was working in UNESCO. So I had like, let's say good contacts with development sector and proper networks. Mm -hmm. So uh, we started a vocational training program for the local Tharu and Bote community. And that was uh, Dhaka weaving, you know, uh, weaving of Dhaka products. And that's again interesting because I have like deeper feeling and respect for this diversity component, diversity uh, notion within oh, our really. nation. So Dhaka is actually hill thing, you know, it's either in Palpa or in Terathum. But then um, we try to experience that with, with the plain people, right? So it's not just the fabric, but then we try to connect the social fabric also with that. So uh, the, the local uh, Tharu and Bote women, they were very, very enthusiastic. And they did four months of training. And the interesting thing, Teres, is normally in Nepal, what happens is we have training. But then after training, there is no sustainable effect. Like okay. there are dots, but we don't connect the dots. So after seeing the tremendous energies of those women, I personally, and let's say the com whole community thought that what next after training? And because of, let's say, my good networks, let's say in national and a little bit of international dimension because I worked in development sector. Mm -hmm. I came up with an idea to develop a weaving house for them. So um, we raised little small funds and all the women came up voluntarily to build that house. And that is, let's say, the, the seed of Green Chwadi. So we started as a weaving house where those women come and they weave the uh, Dhaka things, they make saws, they make scarves. Okay. And then we thought just, no, they were like a, a future uh, women entrepreneurs in a way. So then we thought it will not be sufficient just by doing that weaving house. So let's connect that to in a way social tourism or showcasing their culture, their cultural retreat part you know, their foods, their dresses, their dances, everything, and make it a holistic approach. Mm -hmm. So after that weaving house, we then came up with, um, uh, let's say, eco-community laws or resort concept. Mm -hmm. And that's how we started. Yeah. And today, how has that effort paid off? I mean, what kind of results are you seeing five years down the line? Mm -hmm. So, uh, Teres, I would say that we cannot exactly calculate the five years uh, outcome graph it is because two three years was all derailed COVID. because of covid and uh, i just forgot to mention that we were actually targeting visit nepal 2020 yeah, so like we worked with like all blood and sweat to finish our project in three four months or our initiative in three four months sorry about the term project so um, we tried to finish that very fast down the line but all of a sudden there was like big, big, big thing happened and the whole world was, you know, on Close a down. test or like we all had that patience test, I would exactly. say, um, resilience test. So um, two, three years was like in the beginning, we had like very good start, like uh, social tourism or this modality of tourism is more popular in, in, in Europe, especially yeah. Germans. Yes. So I had like few friends uh, who who were like very close to me and they I would say in a way they had Nepali heart like they were coming Nepal like 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 a very family good. and yeah, they were very very you know um, proactive to help so uh, we had like some very good uh, MOUs and agreements in our pipeline like uh, German travel agents coming uh, like for for MOU signature and they sent few groups and they like over enjoyed mm -hmm. at our place though we were at very scratch level at that time but then they they loved our place but this you know uh, like big thing covid uh, like derailed or i would say you know everything has pros and cons i would say so so that made us very slow sluggish but now uh, when we read uh, the updates that we have like situations gradually falling into place so now it's coming gradually into safe and let me also tell you that about our whole model. So one is definitely the women entrepreneurship part mm -hmm. where they do weaving things, right? Then they have, um, um, we have prepared a traditional Tharu kitchen for them. Yeah. 
Okay. So the, whenever our guests come, normally we have like two nights, three days package uh, on a standard row, but also could be three or four nights, no problem. So at least one night, our guests, Nepali or international, would experience that authentic, you know, kitchen. traditional kitchen with them. Like they use firewood, all the chulo okay. concept, right? And there is a courtyard where where um, they prefer, perform their <coughs> dances. And also you can wear their attires and forms okay. uh, with them. And also the beautiful part is that when we have, let's say, international guests, we just don't uh, do one-way cultural exchange. For example, okay. recently we had a Spanish guest and, um, uh, you know, snails, ghogi. Mm -hmm. So ghogi is a uh, uh, authentic special. thing, Thadu, yes. right? S um, small snails, let's say. Uh, so that's my Spanish guy. When he saw that, oh, this is very popular in our place also, he said. And then he said, we call it caracolas. So that word was also, let's say, culturally exchanged. Okay. And our Tharu women group learned that word. Okay. Or this is just a case, just an example. Okay. Also, what we do is we encourage our guests, mostly internationals, also Nepali, that also you also try to give some of your cultural bits to, to our sure. community. Yes. And, and they love that. Like sometimes uh, we had a German group who pre prepared spaghetti for our women group. And they want, they love, you know, uh, sp uh, spices. So uh, they try to make in that way. So th that's what I want to say that we prefer in cultural exchange also. And that's what I think tourism is all about. Tourism by default is a social, social phenomenon. It's not, you know, isolation, it's social. So that's our women part. The second part is children. So we have a community happy Montessori where we focus, you know, uh, the marginalized, though I don't like this word personally, but then this is the reality, yeah. you know. So we have uh, the underprivileged or marginalized kids from Tharu, Bote, and also like other origins who are like unable to pay. So we have now 32 kids whom we teach uh, in Montessori model in free. Okay. So like we have free education to them, we have free lunch for them, like we have six days menu for them. Similarly, we have like free uniforms, stationery, shoes for them. Okay. So that's yeah. all run through our uh, Green Chwadi um, revenue or the guests, right? And the third part is our green initiatives. So like it's women, children and let's say green or eco um, uh, initiatives. So in green initiatives, what we do is because we are just adjacent to Chitwan National Park. So it's our uh, responsibility or I better call it green accountability. We have to be green accountable now. Uh, social accountability has some limitations. I prefer we have to transcend to green accountability. It's individual, economy and environment. You have to connect okay. all that holistically. So uh, in... In green initiatives, what we do is we uh, we uh, do uh, Chitwan National Park uh, cleaning campaigns. Like we cal collect, you know, garbages or plastic bottles, which we Nepalese are like, sometimes we are really bad at it. Like we throw the bottles. So like, you know, unnecessarily sometimes. I had a friend from Germany. He was carrying that banana peel in his hand for three hours because he could not find the dustbin and that was so inspiring to me you know so those kind of green initiatives we do similarly we do, that's a wetland area so we do river cleaning campaigns wetland cleaning and more uh, interestingly the world itself green chwadi so chwadi means it's a tharu word tharu origin word also you'll find it in nepali dictionary but it means um, spring water pani ko muhan okay right so um, we do chwadi cleaning also. On our entrance, you will see a water, uh, let's say point, where whole community gathers for drinking water. So it's like a community water hub. So from there, we picked our name, Green Chwadi. So it's also interesting that our guests come to our place and they enjoy that chwadi, you know? Okay. Uh, it's like washing there, bathing there, and drinking there. So it's, it's a whole thing, yeah. So that's but it. about your resort lodge, uh, it's at Nawal Parasi, which is probably not as crowded as Saura and other places. But
But tell us about the packages that you offer because at the end of the day, they are travelers who will want to go there. Absolutely. Uh, the itineraries, the, the programs that you have there. Could you tell us? Uh, Teres, this is very like, uh, you know, specific and, you know, I was trying to hit this question. Saura is a brand already. Saura does not need any additional marketing because whenever international or domestic yeah. think of Chitwan, they will go or they will think Saura. That's like so synony synonymous. But our part is, let's say, from Narengat or from Bharatpur airport, it's around 35 kilometers west, west yes. towards the way to Lumbini or Butuwal. So that area is not so explored or not so, you know, uh, on high. Uh, we all know that. Like even our uh, like friends, for example, who were like, like in a way, you know, teasing us that, oh, where did you open your resort? It's, I mean, it's not the famous place. Why did you go there? But they don't have idea that there is Chitwan National Park. There is all, there are all the activities that you do in Saura that is available or catered at our place. And less crowded. Less crowded. That's what I was trying to say. Because when you prefer nature and, you know, green space or green jungle, I think peace is something that you, you know, uh, expect, right? And Saura, I'm not trying to, you know, critic or, you know, blame anything that has its brand and there are thousands of people who prefer Saura kind of place. But my concern is for those travelers, for those people who try uh, to, you know, focus or try to be in nature, try to be in peace, try to experience that authentic community, that welcoming community. For example, when there are guests in Green Chwadi, the whole village is happy, you know. I mean, all the doors are open, like or our guests can go to any of the houses and have tea, for example, and they would be happy to serve, right? So uh, our packages normally are, you know, two nice three days, basically. And also let me add that we have two major components. One is nature retreat and the other is community retreat. So for nature retreat, what we do is we do, let's say, jungle safari or jungle walk. We do bird watch. We do um, uh, boating and boating or canoeing. Uh, boating is more, uh, you know, uh, let's say beautiful in our area because we do it's it in water. big Naraini river and we do it in a sundowner mod and you, you mm -hmm. enjoy that like sun coming down and then you going through that. It's a different serenity, I would say. Uh, I would recommend you also whenever you have time or mm -hmm. yeah. So. Uh, so that's our nature retreat part that you surrender to nature and you, you know, right. get uh, that pure nature heal or nature healing. And the other is community retreat part. So in community retreat, what we do is like we showcase that Tharu culture. We, we do uh, fishing with the community because Bote is authentic fisher group. Yes. Right. So we do fishing with the Bote community. That's our community retreat. Similarly, we do snail hunting with Tharu women. Like that's our interesting activity. You go to their wetland and try to search those small snails and that you clean that and dry it up for next day. And you have that. And it's like very rich in vitamins, you know that. So uh, similarly, we have other cultural retreat as uh, we have a village walk we have um, bicycling and bicycling is also interesting that we we don't own our own bicycles but that's from the community so there is a they point give you to ride. yeah so where the guests gather and then they go to the women uh, group and then they enjoy that bicycle and it's not like that uh, advanced or the gear uh, bikes it's it's okay. very basic and uh, the thing is all the co uh, community retreat activities they are all tip best. We don't charge that, right? It's it's directly by the guests to to the community. So it doesn't have a specific uh, charge, and they are happy with with whatever they get, right? So that that those are our two retreat aspects. And uh, normally for for let's say internationals, uh, that two nights three days we start, uh, and and this is also something very interesting that our rates are very promotional and uh, I would say very cost friendly. If you compare that rate with other uh, big properties in our area, like let's say Tiger Tops or Temple Tiger, 
their big names and all those were inside the jungle inside previously, the national yes. park previously you know yeah. so uh, the rates uh, our initial rates for two nights three days starts from uh, 200 dollars uh, for for internationals and uh, for for indians um, or or nepalese uh, yeah it's it's uh, 10000 inr for indians and for nepal it's 10000 nepali rupees for yes. yeah which and is that's an all inclusive yeah, with inclusive, the activities yes. Everything. yes so it's like a jung jungle package so that includes you know your um, bed breakfast lunch dinner for two nights and also um, the tharu cultural showcase thing your jungle activities everything yes and yes and one additional highlight that we have is so uh, if you see my the the mahindra highway or the 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 main yeah, road point uh, so our place is called kawasoti so when you go south of it you have tharu community as indigenous group and when you go north so we have muggers okay so muggers are the hill indigenous community right so as i said in the beginning we also try to celebrate and respect that diversity dimension right so what we do is if you stay us with us for let's say three nights so we also take you to other side of highway and we give you the magar cultural retreat right okay. and that there you get waterfall and the beauty of nepal like as soon as you go like um, up you get the temperature low which is a yes. universal thing and uh, like the whole like scenario the whole uh, you know environment is so different so that is again additional thing that we cater and we try to you know uh, involve as much as stakeholders as much as possible the other question to you would be how do you sustain because for a lot of uh, tourism entrepreneurs it's always about revenue versus cost but you are inclusive you're trying to assist community you're involving community does that business model really work for others mm -hmm. uh this is very you know uh, a business question i would say and as i said i used to be a business student in the beginning but not with so much business head uh that's why i, I made that paradigm shift also but uh, this is very very you know uh, important you know crux or this is very pivotal because um, to be honest uh, there is the requirement of big big investment in this sector this sector is all about money i would say yeah. because for for you know hospitality for resort you need huge you investment and big. even after covid in our zone in our area if i see there are many resorts coming into the place with huge investment so i also want to um, like be very you know uh, clear and transparent to you that we we had to struggle and in a way still the struggling story is not yet over one thing is of course the covid chapter that has you know repercussions uh, for the futures down. for slowing down most of our you know expected mous like they they were bankrupt for example so uh, more important thing is that we need to have that business linkage somewhere or we need like a, a proper promotion also somewhere we are lacking to that point because what uh, we are so casing or what we are offering is something really unique and most of i would say 99.9% of our guests they have loved our place they they had that you know inner satisfaction uh, they enjoyed it by their eyes and by their heart and most of them had commented us that like you should promote it more i mean why don't you come to europe and do some presentations and things like that and i am really thankful to you that at least i have like more people knowing about our initiatives so i am i'm really grateful well, for that this is the reason i wanted to have you on our show because you, when i we you. talked and i found out about your thing see i think uh, in tourism right now there's a lot of focus on experience especially among uh, the older tourist you know above a certain age group they're not backpackers they they've had fun now it's travel for the soul it's feel good it's to immerse to to get into cultures to feel that 
the money I spend is not just uh, wasted. It's money I spend and there's again the whole community. There's a good feel good feeling about it. Mm. That's why we were doing this interview actually. Uh, but th yes, you need to perhaps put the message out more because in Europe, in, in many markets, people want to to experience this and they want to spend money on a, on a package like this. True. So what are the challenges you face in terms of marketing and are you getting support from, let's say, the uh, associations, mm. from the government, from tourism board? Is anyone really, you know, picking up the story and saying this is something we mm. should do? There is, I would say, uh, I normally have, let's say, very positive perspective. I don't uh, prefer, uh, let's say, blaming the system or blaming, blaming the bureaucracy or whatever we have. But then somewhere down the line, it is very true that our country or our system or our, let's say, tourism fraternity, government or non-state, whatever, they are not optimum. We all realize it because um, uh, we are just happy with small numbers. You know, I was just reading uh, uh, an online media before a few weeks. They said we have like 12.8% increase in numbers uh, of footfalls than last year. And just we are happy with that. But, you know, I mean, there should be so much, uh, you know, uh, rigorous, you know, initiatives. I mean, uh, we are doing like so much like it's it's easy for me to, you know, go abroad and find a job. Okay, exactly. Right? But then I'm trying to, you know, work here, settle here, be with my family and more importantly, help help uh, the community and have that contentment like i'm at least giving some people jobs uh, like even in the community where I, I we work there are like four or five people who were planning to migrate to middle east to the middle east and but they are still there because of the jobs so it's very very um, like important that when you do good things um normally what you expect is people should come and you know ask you that or support you that how we can help you so it's really important that we get like ntb uh, or government or ministry or let's say uh, hotel association or pata or whatever agencies or organizations that the structures we have um they like should be more proactive uh, to initiatives that we do or like they should be more promoting us um, but it's in in a way it's our lapse or it's our gap also that we could not like do frequent meetings with them as much as we could uh, because one thing is that we are not stationed in Kathmandu so that is one reason and the other reason is also that uh, when when you do good things what I believe is uh, the destiny will find you right persons and right, right networks time. at right time. So we normally like we can't always be like so much, you know, uh, like knocking the doors and that approach. So maybe that's in a way our weakness also that we are not fitting into the system, which is, you know, so uh, different in a way. But uh, I believe there there are chances that we could uh, maybe through this platform also at least uh, we are, we are not trying to like you know uh, have thousands and thousands of people coming to our place it's we just want to sustain and and I think this uh, this sector is more like you have to have open mind broader perspective and it's never that only you it's like the whole, the whole system the whole universe so um, this is the right platform and maybe uh, we could, you know, connect somewhere potential. The other thing that I wanted to ask you was about Chitwan as a destination. Chitwan has always been a popular destination and post-COVID some things have changed. But do you see the demand for Chitwan for a place like yours? Mm -hmm. See, uh, this is very... Uh, I would say unfortunate that the road construction from Narin Ghat to Butwal, the road expansion project at the moment, that that is, you know, super slow. I mean, that started before COVID, I guess. And now still, I think the progress rate is around 50% or even less when our neighbors are making 100 kilometers in 100 okay. hours. Right. 
so i think uh, it's all you know intention you know terrace because when you really intend to do something and okay there could be limited resource always adam smith has said we we will never ever have that you know optimum resources in any timeline so uh, that limited resources with smart you know management or smart leadership and and that pure positive intention i think that is possible and mo- many of our you know uh, clients they drop the, the idea to book us because of the road roads road condition and uh, you know it's it's we are thankful to god that people or international guests are visiting nepal just because of our this hospitality we are very poor in our structural dimension you know it's all emotional uh, intelligence or emotional capacity connect. that we have connect. emotionally that, connected that that, yes. that yes. connects you know the globe and they are happy to come here support us smile with us cry with us you know but uh, if you see that in in international dimension when we land to international airports how like you know how well maintained or how well structured they are so uh, as you said chitwan was very hot cake um, uh, during or before let's say covid time in that era even in 2019 uh, record when we have like very high number of uh, international tourists chitwan was very popular destination in that uh, yeah. timeline also but now what happens is i was also talking to some popular travel agencies and then they said now most of uh, the let's say uh, high spending tourists they prefer to stay in kathmandu and uh, in most case they will go pokhara that's that's there or maybe they go to abc or ebc ebc yeah. but uh, they they have a question mark for chitwan in that case so with this i would also like to request to our let's say government counterpart that please i mean speed up uh, okay. and uh, try to you know negotiate and allocate the resources to the optimum that we have so then it's our part you know uh, then you can blame us that oh your marketing is not poor that that's why people are not coming but when we don't have roads and proper it's access not. it's not in my control some of our guests were teasing we had free massage while coming to your hotel or resort so those things are you know beyond my control so when when they reach there then they are happy but that you know journey was painful so that is one big challenge i would say the road so next thing also is um, people uh, are gradually shifting to let's say bardia national park or okay. that side also who have more research to nepal's tourism dimension so it's not just like there was a time when there was only chitwan yeah. but then now there is also they go to bardia or some other national and parks other national also parks, being promoted rara yeah. national park for example so they they are trying to shift also but then still that brand is alive i would say and as a final question what would you say to younger people who want to be entrepreneurs people like you who perhaps have worked for a couple of years they've got the experience professionally uh what would you tell them about social entrepreneurship which is what you are indulging in okay i was waiting for this question actually see uh i would like to encourage this fast changing you know youngsters or the ai generation youths i would say uh i would say i started it little late right because we all have like limited time in our life so i would encourage the young generation to start this little early in your life and for social entrepreneurship you just need two major you know um let's say belief system i would say or you need two uh, trust mechanisms one is you have to respect the community where you work and the next is you have to respect the environment the the green environment the nature so if you are able to balance those two you will win the game because i think uh, we started in the initial time we start with something you know bigger investment but then you can start this with with really small investment right and the interesting part is that in nepal there are so so many potentials that you can 
you know, begin your, your social entrepreneurship with. And linking that to tourism would be, you know, uh, would be very, very satisfying because you can showcase your, your uh, natural beauty, your community beauty, your diversity to the world. And you can be happy like inside and out. So I think I really encourage that we already have so, so many job seekers, you know, finding jobs. Let's be job givers. Thank you so much, Raghav, for taking the time to speak with us. Thank you so it's much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.